Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to show you how I edit my concert photos. I'm not going to touch on color grading because that's more of a preference and I usually edit the same way, like color grade the same way. I usually use a preset, adjust the temperature a little bit and then adjust um, the lighting. In this video, I'll actually be using Photoshop instead of Lightroom and I'll be showing you how to apply certain effects. I'll be giving away a preset pack to uh, one person who comments down their favorite effect from this video. And yeah, uh, let's get straight into it. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. So right here, I have a photo of Alicia Cara. I have a bunch of photos. Um, so we're probably gonna mix and match a couple of these. But I chose these because I thought these weren't so good. Like the background in a lot of these are very like plain. They're just dark and you can't really see anything. Um, so it's the perfect thing for this type of tutorial because usually I don't use Photoshop or edit my concert photos like this unless it's very boring or the photo turns out really bad. So I actually have five different effects um, I'm going to show you today. A lot of them are very similar, but they all are different. You know what I mean? Uh, so the first thing you want to do is duplicate the layer. So you want to have two photos. So you just want to press Control J to duplicate. To start off each effect, you're going to have to do this every single time. So make sure you remember the shortcut. So the first one, just double exposure. You want to duplicate and you want to press screen on blend mode right here and you want to press Control t and you want to resize so there's a couple ways i do this sometimes i just literally put it directly over the photo like this so you can see what that does so that that by itself is really cool and then i would increase the contrast of um, the top layer right here because it's a little faded and there you go or i would uh, move it to the edge slightly like like this and then I would erase like sort of this side so that it only appears in one corner. What this does is it kind of creates like a cladoscope effect sort of because you see like the subject like twice. So you can even do something like this. That's really cool. I think it just adds some stuff in the background when there's nothing in the background. So you can see what that does. So that's the first effect. It's very simple. So now that we're done with double exposure, the next three effects have to do with motion blur. So you want to duplicate the layer. So this is the second one. You want to go to blur, motion blur. And depending on how strong you want the effect, you want to increase the distance more. So say you want a subtle effect. There's two different ways I use this effect. So the first one is I just erase the subject basically and the background is sort of blurry. So you just want to do that. So literally just that. And sometimes it looks a little bit too unorganic. So maybe like decreasing a little bit. So there's one. Two is I go to filter, blur. I do the same thing. And usually it works on a photo where the subject's predominantly in it. So I'm going to choose a photo where she's in it a little bit more. This one. So we're going to download this. So let's just make her a little bit bigger right here. So duplicate it. Go to filter, motion blur. And what I do here is I erase one side of her. So you can see where she is right there. I'm going to erase the left side of her right here. And you want to use a soft brush with zero hardness. And there you go. So it looks like you use a long shutter in camera. Usually you can do this like in camera, but it takes a lot of attempts. So if you just want to do this in Photoshop, that's cool too. Usually I do this when the, the photo is a little bit boring. So I actually did this with a photo of Lil TJ on my Instagram. So you guys can see that. Um, and we're going to just use curves here to kind of make it pop. So there you go. That's just one photo right there. So that's the second effect. The third effect is um, radio blur. Actually, the fourth effect is radio blur too, but there's two types of radio blur. There's spin and there's zoom. I personally prefer zoom. I'm going to show you spin first. Um, and usually these look better when it's a wider photo and the subject isn't in it as much, but I'm going to show you on the wide photo and on the close up photo here too. So we're going to go to radio blur and we're going to go to spin and it's pretty self-explanatory. It literally just makes a spinny blur thing. So you can just erase um, the middle where the subject is. But I think this looks a little bit unorganic. So this looks good. This actually looks pretty good. Um, you can even increase it a little bit. And similar to what I did with um, 
the double exposure you can put it in like a corner right here and if you want it to make it pop you can go to like brightness and contrast or curves i use curves because it's a little bit more flexible with what i could do so something like that so that's the third effect and the fourth effect is the same thing but it's zoom instead of blur so i'm going to show you this so right here you can see what that does and you can see that um with the blur it seems like her face is a little bit higher up because it kind of distorts it so i'm actually going to move this slightly up to match and then let's just erase the middle right here so something like that So there you go um you can see what that does and i'm gonna do it on the wider photo like i promised so we're gonna duplicate this and we're gonna go to radio blur we're gonna move it slightly up you don't have to move it slightly up i just prefer it so it kind of lines up with the original photo and then there you go it looks better in wider photos because it seems more organic so a lot of concert photographers do this a lot and you don't have to apply this to concert photos. There's a, there's a bunch of different ways you can use this. Um, these very subtle effects in my opinion. And if you want it to be a little bit more subtle, you can just, I'm actually going to come through with a six tip because I just thought of it. Um, I don't use this one often, but it's going to be called the soft glow effect and you're going to use blur as well, but a different type of blur. So, um, this is the fifth effect. So you want to actually use Gaussian blur or Gaussian. I don't even know how to say it. Um, and you want to increase it so that you can still see the subject, but not too much where you don't know what the subject is. So around here and you want to go to blend mode and set screen. Basically you'll get this very, very bright image and you can see what I mean by glowing. So you can move it a couple pixels left and right by using the arrow keys. So I'm going to do that. And you can see it's a little bit bright, so you can use color curves or like uh, brightness and contrast to adjust the lighting a little bit. So just like move it down a little. And if it's a little bit too glowy, you can just decrease it a little. But there's just one effect. And if you if there's a certain place that you want to erase, you can just do that. So maybe like her face. So yeah, that's about it for this effect. And um, now I'm going to show you my most used effect, which is using overlays and particle textures, light leaks and stuff like that on Google. So you just want to search up like light leak there like it literally auto filled because i use it so much um and you go to images and a good tip is to go to tools size and large so that you can ensure that the textures and stuff that you're using are high quality so i'm going to use this one i actually have never seen this one so we're just going to copy this and we're going to paste it and you just want to um, choose a blend mode so screen is usually the one i use and then you just want to find out what looks good with it so that looks pretty cool what i don't like about it personally is these little like dots like these particles um so we're just gonna delete this part i like the purple part though and then you can always increase the contrast so it fits in a little bit better so there's one you can um sort of mix and match with a bunch of them i like this one even though it's low quality actually nah it's a little bit too low quality so we're gonna choose another one one of these this one looks sick you don't want to overdo it obviously usually one's sufficient so maybe we can put it in like a corner right here and then erase the corners and change the color I realize this is a little bit too big and it doesn't even fit the color scheme a little. Something like that. Or usually I actually use just light leak overlay. Usually I use a bunch of these ones, like these RGB ones where it's very subtle. So let's just hide the rest of them actually. So usually I use these ones.
like coming out of the corner or something like that. This one looks good just from the bottom. And yeah, so I use a bunch of these overlays. You just want to find a really good one. Typically, I use the same type of overlays. I never use like the same overlay. Oh, this one looks good. This one's crazy. Yeah, this one, this one's, this one's the one. So, and this one had a watermark on it, bro. I finesse this one. And then if you feel like it might look better with a different color, you can cycle through. I think it looks perfectly good like this, or even like one solid color. Actually, I like the pink a little. That pink one. Yeah, we're gonna stick with pink. And then let's just apply one of the old effects. So we're gonna duplicate this and then press Control E to merge all of them. Now we're gonna like, we could do like double exposure. Oh, now you can see the watermark. Oopsies. Uh, let's actually not do double exposure. I don't think it's a little bit too bright for that. So we're gonna do um, the motion blur. Let's increase it a lot and let's put it to the side. And then erase it. Oh, wow. That's sort of elite. So there you go. This is a little overkill, honestly. Um, I don't know if I would do this all the time. Like if I would do this, it would probably just look like that. But I'm, uh, I'm spilling all the beans today. And if you can see like, oh yeah, it's yellow and pinkish and you see blue right here. Um, usually I remove colors as well. So you can just go to blue. Um, on hue and saturation and just decrease it. So something like that. And you can see it's empty a little bit in the top left. So you might wanna like put something there like this. And now it's empty in the bottom left now. But yeah, something like this or this, obviously. This is a little overkill, like I said before. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you out. I think it turned out pretty good. If you guys enjoy, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, my name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.